Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Really nice to see you. Thanks so much for joining. Um, I'm Gail. I'm an artist and I really love um, lots of sort of drawing, but particularly I'm a big fan of something called continuous line drawing. So I thought today we could do it because it's such a lovely chill out thing to do. Um, so if my mic is out of sync or you can't hear, let me just turn that music down a little bit. I thought we could just have a nice relaxed uh, chill out afternoon together um, doing, you know, kind of this sort of thing. And I've got some reference photos to show you. So will be, this is my drawing board. So you'll be able to see what I'm doing but I would definitely say if you can get yourself some paper and pens and join in um, you can just do patterns there's no need to do um, pictures at all but if you want to um, I've got some here so we'll move on to those a little bit later um, if it's working out and you're enjoying it and you want to try something a little bit more interesting so I'll show you some of those We've got um, some leaves, more leaves, some flamingos, because I love flamingos. Um, okay, but we won't do those till a little bit later. So if you're watching, do um, drop me a line. It's really nice to see that there's people in the room. Um, and we're going to start with just some patterns. So if you've got um, drawing tools ready, it doesn't matter what it is. So I've got, can have some pencils, we've got a few, any old pencil, any colours you like. If you want to change colours, you can. There's no, um, there's no rules. This is really just about um, us all having a nice time together. So um, I can see when you put things in the chat um, and hopefully they will also pop up on the screen. So if it's working, we should be able to put messages in and we should be able to see them mm -mm -mm. just there. Okay, right. So um, yeah, and let me know if the music is too loud, too quiet. Um, I know my lip sync isn't brilliant, um, but if you know about lip syncing and you want to tell me how many nanoseconds to adjust it by, I can adjust it. Okay, so. What I tend to use for this sort of thing, and it's by no means a rule, is I quite like using, these are Stedler brush pens. Um, so this is nice and thick, that there. And I just like drawing any kind of wavy lines. Um, we'll do some more jagged ones as well. It's very, very good for your, um, pencil control so for when you're doing tighter drawings it's really good to have a good control of your um, your pencil and this sort of thing really helps loosen give you loose control which is a really good state to be drawing in and um, it's also quite nice to have either a different color or a finer nib so this is a slightly finer nib and then we're going to be doing some just you know so we've given ourselves a little bit of structure and just starting loosening up and can you see I'm not really moving my wrist I'm just moving from the, I'm moving the whole arm and you might have heard this in um, in all sorts of um, things about like calligraphy if you've done any calligraphy um, you're often encouraged to be more kind of generous and sweeping with your movements so that's a really nice thing to do. So if you want to get started, just grab a pencil or a pen and some paper, and it's absolutely no stress, no precious paper, just um, you know recycled scraps. You can have the back of anything. Um, you can go and get something if you want. I'll still be here. I'm going to be here till five. So we've got lots of time, time to chat, Time to get to know each other and um, time to just loosen up and enjoy making patterns. So there's no rules if you want to change colours. You can do that. There's nobody needs to see what you've done. I don't know if you can see that green. I'll use the fat one. Right, let's see. I'm going to do a little bit more with a different colour. I'm going to do something a little bit more spiky. 
but I'm still moving right from the shoulder. So I'm not moving, if I was to do it from the wrist, it would be like this. So can you see I've anchored my wrist? Whereas when I'm moving from the shoulder, I can actually get more of a beat going. And when you're doing hatching, if you're hatching a drawing, that's um, having a bit of a beat is a really nice thing. So if I was just to do lines like that, it helps. It's a bit like chopping vegetables. So I know I sound a bit mad, but there you go. So that's obviously not continuous might have seen if you like Picasso. Picasso did some wonderful continuous line. If you look up his, a lot of his drawings, um, and he did some really lovely things with um, doves. You might have seen um, he did things where there was like the, the head of the dove and then the it creates a lovely wing shape like that. And then sometimes I think he kind of merged them into a into a mouth like that. So it's not a hard and fast rule if you want to do there. Uh, so look at that. I'm just playing with the idea of doing a face. Might do some hair to match, and then um, do the eyes. So that's not continuous line at all. But um, if you do continuous line, you see these lovely joins like that, and sometimes you see a line that goes across like that. You can see when people have used a continuous line, and sometimes they trace over their lines like that. And, um, but we don't have to be rigid about it. I'm not. Uh, there's no rules here. So uh, now I've got this drawing started. I will just do some other colours. Let's do some purple swishes. So really this is not about the end product. This is about loosening up, relaxing, getting your mind into a state of just flowing and really practicing that kind of relaxed focus and you can if you feel your mind going into another place where you're thinking this is um, you know this picture doesn't look how I wanted it just to be a bit like yoga just bring your acknowledge where you've gone and then just bring your mind back and just bring your mind back and maybe do some easy basic patterns so I hope you've got your pencils out and your pens so I'm going to do again, I'm going to show you again, we start, if you start with a thicker pen, then what you can do is create a little bit of a framework and then into that framework you can do some finer drawing. Um, so let's, uh, let me think, I might do something a little bit like an amoeba, like that, or it could be a flower. Just creating a little bit of structure there and then I'm going to enjoy doing some just filling in vaguely following the lines the main thing is that I'm relaxing and I'm moving from the shoulder not worrying about what it's going to look like you can tell it's not difficult because I can talk at the same time if I was doing a portrait I might find it rather difficult to talk at the same time, but if you're really relaxed, there, you can just, so I'm going to go all around the outside, got myself a little plan, and if you want to put anything in the chat, I can see what you put in, it would be lovely to see who's watching, tell me what you like doing, what sort of art you like doing, or what sort of art you enjoy watching. Um, if you've got any questions, I'm very happy, even if it's about the price of lemons. Um, I'm in the UK, I'm in Bristol, in the west of England, and it's kind of mixture. It's very April showers, even though it's May now. We've had sun and rain today here. There we are. Now you'll notice that I haven't really done any overlapping. I've just kept all my... So to start with, I'm just keeping all my patterns 
um, I'm just tracing and looking for gaps and you can stop if you want you can stop leave your pen on the page and then keep going so try and keep your pen on the page stop and go like that. how are you finding this is this nice does this help you relax and what do you think of the music I chose this music recently, I've just discovered Epidemic Sounds, so um, I've tried to choose a load of chill out music. It's my favourite soundtrack so far for my streaming. So notice when I'm going down a path, I've left myself a way out, because I'm going to be coming up round there. It's quite a nice thing to do, so you don't end up stuck in a hole. Like that there. So the next page that we're going to be doing will be, I'll look at doing some overlapping. And also I would just like to say if you want to shout out, I do do shout outs, um, they're quite fun and a bit silly. So um, if, you're, if you're at home to fun and silly then oh, you've come to the right place. Okay so let me think, I'm going to change colour. I like that purple. I'm going to do some more purple. Right. So, um, what shall I do to give it? Can I give it a bit of structure again with the dark, the thicker line? And um, sometimes you can also you can rehearse your line, so you don't even have. Oh, are you poor? <laughs> That's nice. That's fair enough. As if it helps you relax, then Depeche Mode is fine. Um, it's just lovely to know you're watching. And have you got your pencils out? I hope you have. Right, so I'm not even going to think about this or plan. Now we're going to be doing some more overlapping. So I'm just going to whoosh around on the page. Like that. There we are. Now sometimes with these you can colour them in. I'm not going to colour them in at the moment, but what I might do is do a little bit of writing and there's a really nice writing exercise where you can just write words and then colour in the gaps. Um, okay, oh and Paul, I haven't forgotten Phoenix's shout out from last week, so I owe you a shout out. You might have the volume down anyway, you might not be able to hear me. Okay, so moving from the shoulder, again. Well you can't really see that can you? Let's go for a darker colour. Where's a colour that you'll be able to see? The darker blue. Okay, nice peacock blue. There we are. And all these um, patterns are beautifully rhythmic and they are useful in all sorts of situations so you, if you have them like at your fingertips you can use these in different situations you can use them for filling space so sometimes instead of just shading it's quite nice like this you can just fill the space with your picture and then you can shade so you could do, if I was to do this, and I can make them bigger and smaller. I'm keeping it round, I'm keeping that rhythm. I don't know if you can hear, it's making a lovely sound. And then I'm going to make it denser here. And when you sit back, you, you see, or you squint, you can see it as shading. So this is just going in a loopy spiral, like that. Okay, and now let's try some less fluid. Let's try um, what I used to do when I was little, on long car journeys, back in the day. He's embarrassed, oh, okay. Is Phoenix watching? If he's not, I can do him a shout out and then I can do a um, screenshot of it for you, Paul. So this is more random lines 
And this is a bit like, I used to do this on journeys, I used to think I was making a map. So when the car vibrated, I used to hold my hand like one of those um, sensors you see in the museum and just let it wander. Okay, so let's try another colour. Have you got some colours out? There we are, I'm going to do a bit of a thicker green. I'm going to do a spiral of spirals. There, right. That's enough of that. Okay, so um, another thing you can do with continuous line is writing. So say I was going to write um, a story. Oh, he's there. Hi, Phoenix. Okay, right, so you could do this. You can write a story turning the page without once, without leaving the page, and it's like that. Once upon a time, right, I'm going to do some complete like, and then what you can do, I'm going to leave my pen when you're doing continuous line, it, you can just leave your pen or pencil touching the page and turn it once upon a time there was what was there we need to think of a story together there was a cat the cat right you'll see where i'm going with this in a minute Okay, this is going to really embarrass you now. Phoenix. The cat. I'm going to have to cross these T's somehow. And Phoenix. So you can write anything. Had tea. This is completely random. <laughs> and cake. Okay, right. So, what I wanted to show you is I'm going to, I will just cross those, otherwise, it's illegible. Okay there was right okay so then what you can do is you can just color in the holes now this seems childish but it's a really really this is all about just being playful with your art so I'm going to just color in with some random colors and you'll see at the end I hope actually looks really nice and it, you can you can not go for a totally um, a totally diverse color palette so I'm going to keep these colors in the warm side of the spectrum so I'm using orange and I'll do some yellow as well and it's just a really nice thing that you can do either for your own relaxation or if you wanted to write a message on a notice board, just as a sort of a little something to make it more, I don't know, more fun, a little bit more special. Right, and then yellow as well. So we've got all these, um, we really haven't got any. are looking a bit green because it's mixing with the black
So you could write a message or you could copy out a poem. And the thing is, when you're turning the paper, just anchor it with your, with your pen and rotate it over your pen. There. And I'm just going to make Phoenix's letter a different colour just to make that special. There we are. There's a funny shout out. That wasn't quite the normal sort of shout out. And if you want, I'll do a normal one, one of my usual shout outs. But there's, a, there's just a funny little thing that you can do to make um, continuous line practice. Um, oh, I've missed one there. Make it fun. There we are, what do you think of that? Once upon a time, there was a cat. The cat had a friend called Phoenix. The cat and Phoenix had tea and cake. There. Okay, so I'm wondering now if it would be a good time to show you. I'm going to move over and show you some of the reference photos. So if you would like to, um, if you would like the reference photos, you can download them from my website. So the, um, there's the address, but I'll be showing them on the screen anyway. So we'll move over to this one when I'm drawing from the reference photo. So you can see the reference photos and you can see what I'm using to draw from. So hopefully, if you're drawing from it as well, um, you can bring that page up on my website or you can um, just draw from the screen. So let me know if, that's, uh, if that works for you. Right. So when you're doing things like this, something I quite like to do, and I'll show you the, um, here's an example. So what I tend to like doing is I do my line drawing in a fine line, which isn't quite as eye catching as the fat one. So say you were using pencil, you could use a hard pencil for your fine line, and then you could use a pen or a soft pencil for the heavier line. So I'm just going to use the um, light pen to do the palm trees and then I will go over some of the ones that I want to bring out uh, with a thicker pen. So it's just a little way of um, putting a bit of variety in your drawing. Okay so there we go. Right so I remember that we can um, doesn't have to be totally accurate but one of the things when you're doing this that is very nice to do you can still move from your elbow it is to look now if you're if you're drawing the palm trees and you can see my my one it's not going to be any great shakes but I'm still trying to go into that kind of mental state of just looking, just being really, not worrying too much about the finished picture and especially I'm looking at the edges, I'm looking at shapes, if it doesn't join up it doesn't matter, you can always just do a line, you can make something up and I've chosen reference photos that hopefully they're, they're, they're very organic so if I was doing like buildings and things you have to be a little bit more careful but this way we don't and you can see I want to go from there down to there so I'm just going to trace my line back down and I'm looking here going down the, pine, the, the palm tree like that and I don't know if you can see there's a little bit dangling down I think on that palm tree so just kind of it doesn't matter if you observe something up here and you put it in down there the main thing I find that I really like to do is try and treat it as an exercise in observation without really worrying too much about structure. You've got like a wandering line and let your line wander and don't really worry about if it's completely in the right place. But do have a real look at the 
if you're like looking at the thing that you're the spot that you're drawing so in your mind here's a good idea in your mind you can imagine that you're walking around the object so I'm mentally I'm walking around those fronds of that second palm and I can see some going up like that there's like a nub in the middle and I'm just walking around the edge with my pen so I'm not really looking at my board very much and sometimes what you can do is you can do it without looking at all okay and I'm just taking a little scope at how wide that is so I can see I've got that a bit too wide but I'm not going to worry about that all the palm trees have got a joint at the bottom and then these two are very close so up I go now up the palm tree imagining like I'm a person just climbing those palm trees to collect coconuts or something one of those amazing people who are so agile right now if you can see where I've got to I'm actually going to jump ship from one palm tree to the next one. Can you see there's a palm in front of the palm tree? So I'm on palm tree number, I've skipped, I've, I've dropped palm tree number three, and I'm on to number four. And I'll come back and do number three in a second. There we go. So I thought it might be quite good to get this palm tree number three trunk in. And I wonder if you can see why. I wonder if you can see that doing that to because that trunk is in front of the other one okay so I'm trying not to I'm trying to resist the temptation just to make things up I'm trying even if it's loose but to keep it based on observation there and um, the other thing of course that you can do like we do in other um, in other styles is remember to um, draw those negative spaces right so now I'm going to go back to palm tree number three and carry on drawing it and I've got that area there where it goes behind palm tree number four there we are and I will trace back round Okay, here we are. It's quite a straight one, this one. A very straight section. And there's some bits in the joints there. There we are. I don't know whether these are coconut palms or date palms. Right, and I, this palm tree here comes out the other side as well. So I'm going to travel, and you can do this with continuous line. I'm just going to travel back up that way and carry it on like that. Now we've got palm tree number five and six are kind of connected, aren't they? So let's go on to palm tree number five. I'm counting from the right and we've got a lovely kind of crossing over that's happening here. So there's palm tree number five. Now I'm on palm tree number six. I hope this is making sense. I'm going to do a bit more of palm tree number six, which has got a very rhythmic edge and is going straight up like this. And it's got quite a nice fat bit there and it's really tall so I'm going to get up move my paper, paper down so you can see and I'm going to try and use that top bit of the paper and look at the way these fronds are blowing in the wind it's so lovely isn't it that, that lovely I'm guessing it's a warm tropical wind what have you got in your in your cup, in your imaginary glass. I think I've got a pina colada. <laughs> okay. Let's go down here. So this is palm tree number five. It's like checkout number five. <laughs> palm tree number five, there we go. And I'm gonna do some of those internal fronds as well. Okay, so you if you're watching or drawing right let's come down palm tree number five 
onto that wide bit. I don't know how that wide bit comes. I think it's something to do the way the way they're maintained. Um, right, and then we've got that bit where palm tree number five obscures palm tree. Oh, palm tree number six obscures number five. Right, here's number six now, peeping up behind. That's also got a wide bit and a narrow bit. Now these uh, tequila sunrise. Ah, what's in that? I think I, they're the ones that look lovely, aren't they? They go like pink, orange, red. Okay, now I'm going to have to go. I don't want to cut across here because I want to leave that empty. So I'm going to track back down palm tree number five. And I might just do a little bit of his textures there. And palm tree number five then pops out the other side, I think. So let's do that. So here it comes, um, here, there. That's not quite right, but never mind. Okay, so at a later point, what I might do is I'll go over one or two of the foreground palm trees with a heavier hand with the thick end of the um, pen and that will bring them forward or what I could do actually I might for a different because I did that in the example so what I might do is just go over them the leaves with a heavier hand we could do another color really it doesn't matter it's just I'm just trying to keep moving from the um, shoulder Sometimes you do end up getting tight, but even if you move from the elbow rather than from the wrist, it's a good, it's good to practice like that. Okay, and we've got another lot going on here. All oh, right, yes, yeah. Nice orangey red drink. Okay, right here we go. Down now. These two are overlapping again, aren't they? And so with this sort of thing, when you're drawing uh, vegetation, it really isn't um, critical to get things in the right place. But what really helps is to notice things and put them in somewhere. So if you get, you know, like where you get a, a joint like that, or this behavior where they're thin at the top and thick, um, those sort of things are very, um, very important for getting the nature of the subject, if you know what I mean. And it doesn't really matter it, where they are, as long as you've caught them somewhere in your drawing. Okay, so I've got some, some behind here. I don't know how this is for you. Is this nice to watch? If this is nice, I can carry on and just do, I'm gonna do a couple more palm trees and then I'm going to move, I'm trying to be quite disciplined about not coming off the page. I'm going to draw some negative shapes now, just looking at those bits of beautiful blue sky and those top, right on the top of the palm trees where they're swishing in the wind, those lovely shredded palm, they, these are, the more they look like grassy kind of palms. Okay, and then let's come down here. I don't know, I've lost track of what number palm this is, but there's some stuff going on behind it. So I'm just gonna do that and then come down here. Let's get that one there. Okay. So you could, of course, do this from life and it's really nice doing as well to do, I really like doing dances. I'll do some dances in a minute. Um, not from photos, I'll just do them from imagination but um, you can do them from videos. It's a really good practice. Okay, and let's, I really like this palm tree behind because it's got a very, very, very thin um, trunk. And I think that's a nice contrast. It doesn't really matter, as I said, if it's not in the right place. Okay, so let's leave them like that then. Oh no, hang on, we need that little one at the side. Can't leave that one out. Right, I'm gonna come down here. 
and I'm so I've skipped a few palms and I'm just going to draw that last one on the very end because I think it's really uh, it's really a nice thing I'm not sure if it's little because it's far away or it's little because it's a young one but anyway it's a nice little dynamic to the composition there we are and it's got quite a nice tilt on it like it really can't quite manage to stand up in front of the right now I'm going to go up so I'm going to draw the horizon and so we've got some shadows to put in and the horizon so in terms of the shadows I quite like the way they go they kind of come diagonally down so I think the Sun is like up here somewhere so I'm just going to try and get those shadows kind of in like that if that makes sense so I'm going up a little bit and then down to the trees and they might look a bit strange until you've got more but once you've got a few of them in they start in general and that's the thing with shadows they might look strange on the one but put them in a few and, you, and they start to make sense hopefully right and I can see we missed a bit of a bit of branching thing going on here Let me go up and sort that out now I'm also then going to put in the horizon so that means coming all the way down like this Oh, I might do a double. Maybe if I did a double horizon while I'm there. Just doing little rectangles, really. And it doesn't matter if it's not... They're not perfectly right, but they just give the lines a lovely quality. And then we will do... I will go over some with dark, and, and then we'll do some dancers. Okay. Right, there we go, there's that horizon on the baby palm, which can go like that. In fact, I might just put those shadows, let's do them, let's carry them on and actually allude to the, because they make lovely patterns in the sand, those shadows, don't they? It's getting a bit ridiculous, I'm trying to touch the, and there we go. I don't know if um, my friend Mia is going to watch this later, but Mia, when we met your parents, we went to a lovely place in the Caribbean, uh, and there was a place there called Sandy Island. Sandy Island. It was on the, the holiday when we met them, and on Sandy Island, there was a guy who could climb up these palm trees. Uh, your dad had a go as well. It's actually, t you have to be really strong to climb up a palm tree. Okay, here we go. Right, so um, that's, I wonder if you can see, I wonder if I need to focus that a bit better. What's the focus like, Paul? Is it? Okay, there we go. Right, and I think what I might do is I'm going to try, first of all, going over these fronds with a thicker pen and then either I'm going to do all the fronds with a thick pen or I will do the foreground palms. And I've got an example with the foreground palms. Let me just have a little look through my... So this is one option. So I could do the foreground palms like that to bring them forward or I can just do the tops. So I'm going to choose one of the foreground palms. Put that in. go over that and it allows me to be a little bit more selective with which lines I decide to champion and which white lines get lost and I can add a little bit more of the dynamic you know, I can add some of that there we go. it's a clear pick okay thank you <sighs> your poor eyes late night drawing probably hmm I haven't decided so this uh, let's find another foreground palm I think um, this one is actually for I'm gonna go for this one right let's put that in thank you Paul for that feedback
I wonder how your lino cutting's going, Paul. Have you done a print yet? The iris was looking amazing. And I saw Nick in Bristol Fine Art. Um, right, I'm going to do one more foreground and then take a decision. Okay, let's do this one. that lovely rhythm. See the rhythm of the fronds in the, in the wind. Like that, I'm using, I'm moving my arm. There we go, right. What are we going to do then? Am I going to do the trunks or am I just going to do all the tops? Hmm, I'm quite liking these tops. I'm going to go one more top. You can see where this is going. But you can see how easy this is. And it's really, you know, if you can draw the horizon straight, the rest really doesn't matter. And it's quite effective. It's got a nice kind of, I think it's got a nice sort of graphic feel to it this style and not just because of the palm trees hmm right I'm trying to decide whether to go down one or two of them with a, fi a fat line what do you reckon I would take your advice so I could trace down I could trace down on one side why don't I do that? Yeah, I'll try that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my thick pen. Now the light is obviously coming from here because I've got those shadows going that way. So I'm going to try with the first one as an experiment. I'm going to go down that side and see if that creates a sense of shadow down the side. It might not work. that works I think I'm going to carry on doing that as long as it's working there we go even do this background one one two three four palm tree number five okay and this one Just trying to show how the evening sun hits those palms as you slurp your drink and jingle your um, ice cubes in your glass. There we go, nearly finished with this one. Right, I might just leave a couple to do this I'm going to do this little baby elephant here it's asking me to be properly done it wants to be part of the big ones okay right so that's enough palm trees you've done a wish rough quick trial on just the black okay it was okay with the bank holiday oh that's brilliant yeah yes it's uh, those first, how did it come out? Did it, was it um, even? Because they are, um, yeah, so uh, here we go. I'll just give you one, a bit more look at this. So um, you can see it doesn't exactly match those palms, um, but it's just picked up on the general sense of the palms. Okay. And um, now let's just do a little bit of um, dancing. So I'm going to show you, so I do this lovely dancer called um, Anais Pomeline. She's a, she's a comedian, a model, um, she does Zoom life drawing, which is really great. Um, and sometimes she dances in her, in her, um, in her Zooms. So what I'm going to do is just um, show you how I do it, not 
watching her, but just this is something you can do. So you can take, take a video of dancing. So it can be hip hop, it can be um, ballet or anything. And then just try and look at the shape. So you can freeze it, the video, and then do the shape. Or you can um, just uh, run it very slowly. So you can um, change the speed on YouTube. Um, or you can just let it roll and um, so I quite like freeze framing sometimes but you'll find if you do a whole sheet of figures then um, when you step back and look at it you can sense and probably guess the music so um, I let me try I'm gonna do some ballet ones so I'm just imagining so I'm just imagining the shapes I'm gonna use a I, I'm gonna use a sort of tutu gesture and I'm gonna so I'm just sort of thinking about how um, let me see I'm imagining so here the ballet dancer is bending over like that with her tutu and her hands like that and then um, let's do her up on points maybe one foot out like that and there we go start a new one um, right I'm gonna have um, let's have I'll do a, a whole sheet of uh, female and then I'll do a, a male dancer as well because they're beautiful um, right what can she be doing um, let's have yeah arms out like that so very elegant arms out you can do little gestures for um, hands like a little twirl like that and then I'm going to do one like this so she's on her point like that and then um, let's carry this over as though there's another one maybe there's two friends and they're doing the same move side by side might be nice and you can um, as well you can allude to shoulders so you can think a little bit more um, so if I did say I would do I'm gonna move a little bit more slowly and then think about shoulders so I, you can think about the joints like that and you don't need to worry about proportions but there's a sort of I don't know if that makes sense but it can look incredibly elegant um, if you get those it's like the um, arms up okay right so that's an example it's not very dynamic that one is it let's do a man let's do a leaping a leaping man so um, the Royal Ballet have got uh, or I think it's the Royal Opera House have got absolutely loads of videos of ballerinas so um, let's put him in doing a leap so these men do incredible leaps that seems to be their um, I'm going to do one of those sideways ones where he's kicking his feet, his heels together. Um, let's do him, do his arms up again. I quite like that. So they have more shoulder action. Let's do, he's got one arm, one foot out, the other one like that. Um, let's go down here. I'm going to make him leap again. Just looking at the not worrying about proportions, just trying to think about what are the things that would catch your eye on that pose. Um, right, and let's do him, I'll do him curled up in a ball. So sometimes, maybe that's like where he's kind of begging or dying or something like they do. Here's another one where he's looking down. There's his arms and a leg like that. Um, I'm going to do another leap here, so I've got muddled up there, let's go foot there, oh there's a nice one, so there's another, so he's looking that way, um, there we go, so you get the general idea, so you can do dancers and um, hip hop, uh, as I said is really good, um, it's really nice, sometimes you can find um, really big people, um, you know re really large um, and you can have great fun doing their um, you know they, they, they make great shapes um, there's a guy I follow on Instagram um, 
yeah so he does brilliant dancing so and, and TikTok as well so you can create these um, you know incredible uh, you, you still need a sense of the spine that's the key is is have that spine and there's the pelvis so if that's head spine pelvis and he's really posing like that sort of thing with his maybe with his arms thrown back and you can even put see look we could put a, put a cap on there let's do that do some more um, what other shapes might he be making um, I know I sort of it's quite good if he's looking sideways isn't it um, let's go so let's say he's he's like this he's leaning over like that there's his pelvis uh, shoulders elbows hands like that bum knees and feet there and we can put a hat on him like that give him a cap might even give him feet there's some nice expressive um, uh, what else um, could be yeah let's make him do some sort of thing where he's got his I'm going to do some so, so there's his spine I'll get that in to start with and I'm going to try and get some sort of counter posing going on so we've got there's his tummy bum and um, shoulders like that and he can be looking up for this one I think Try that and see how that looks. So there's his tummy. Okay, and then let's put a, put a cap on like that. Um, what else? Um, oh, when they do the caterpillar, don't they? What's that? So they go, so they go like there's the head, bum up in the air, like that. There's a nice one. So let's put his cap like that and feet like that um, and you can put some dynamic moves you can put some lines in as well to suggest the movement so particularly this one you know you might do some more lines so or you could even feel your way in with the lines um, I feel like we need one more here something going there um, what could he be doing? I want to give him a hat. I want to give him. I know. Right. Here's his legs. So we're going to do the, the rhythm of the legs first, like that. So he's got a foot up here and a foot down there. And let's make him go right like that. Okay. So arm thrown back. There's his tummy. His spine's coming like that. He's got his bum here. There's the rhythm of the legs. That leg goes like, there's his knee. Hopefully this will make sense. And there's his, right. And then let's put his hat like that. There we go. Okay, so there's, it wasn't really continuous line, but it's just like showing, trying to show a sort of dancing guy. Right, let me have a look, Paul, at what you said about your um, nine cap. Slightly disappointed with border not being black enough. It's getting used to how much. Yes, it is getting used to how much paint or ink to roll on. Um, yes, it is really. It, it's a real knack, and the, the sort of lino makes a difference as well. And also, uh, the, probably the biggest difference is the paper. So using, um, I don't know what sort of paper you are using, but don't use nice paper. Um, Printer paper is great, like thin paper, uh, for getting those first um, prints. And also remember, it's a little digression, just for a second. So if this is your lino here, and here's your paper, you can put your lino in here, like that, and you, you ink your lino, put your paper on here. You can burnish it like that with your finger. Have it, hold, keep it anchored up here lift it up like that and then you can see on here if there are any bits that need more ink and you can get your roller and re-ink the the bits where it's not dark enough
push it down and, and as long as it's anchored at the top you can basically add more ink on so if it's um, not black enough then that's there's a couple of tips thin paper and possibly even re-inking okay um, what was I gonna do I was gonna do something I was do, did dancers um, oh yes I was gonna do flamingos right um, if anyone in my family is watching I'd really love a cup of tea <laughs> Right, um, okay, so let's go and um, I'll show you another. Okay, now what reference photo shall we use? That's a very nice one. I'm thinking flamingos would be fun. Right, and for the sake of anyone who's just joined, I'm just going to have a little whiz through what we've done while we've been here. So all lovely, relaxing, continuous line. Um, not worrying what it looks like remember relaxing doing um, you can do the structure in a strong color or a strong darker line and then use that as a skeleton for yourself to work around um, you can do if you have a look at Picasso's Picasso did some really great ones where he kind of combined faces and doves and um, you know birds are great because they've got this lovely feather thing going on so that's us so far. That's our first hour. So we did some patterns. That's really no great shakes, is it? And then here's how you can do continuous line with writing. I really like that. It's a, it's a lovely way you could do a poem or a beautiful message. Um, yes. Tricks of the trade, Paul, absolutely. And it's because you're such a great communicator, that's why you pick these things up. Okay, so, um, yeah, palm trees. I might do the flamingos in a similar sort of way to this. Um, dancers, so ballet dancers. These are from imagination, but I think possibly better to do it from a, a visual thing. I like these, though. These are... So it's when you're when I'm using two different thicknesses, it really gives a nice um, bit of variety, doesn't it? Okay, let's have a look at those flamingos then. Right. So, um, how am I going to do this? I'm just going to take a second to think about it. So, I'm quite tempted to do the. Um, try and do the top just drawing the negative space let's see if that will work so I'm going to use the smaller pen I'm going to start on the left so that I don't smudge my work and I'm going to start right at the left of the photo um, I might turn my page around actually like that sorry that means you've got quite a lot of wasted space on what you can see but right there we go and then I can move it down so let's start with those that top edge so I'm going to start over here and I am literally drawing the black so I'm not really looking at them as flamingos I'm looking at them as the black background I'm trusting that some flamingos will come out of this. And remembering when you're drawing continuous line, you can just pause so you can take your pen, just rest your pen on the paper. Probably easier to do if you're using um, pencil. Uh, sometimes pen can be a bit smudgy. And there we go, there's that. We were doing last week. Okay, that's a little bit of a uh, rather undignified. Um, bird there, that one. Don't like that one. I might have to sort that out later with the pen. Okay, 
Let's go back. So I'm continuing. This is the back of those birds slightly further in the foreground. And I'm hoping, I don't know, this is an experiment, and you know this is live, so it could go horribly wrong. But I'm hoping that even if the individual birds don't look right, the overall effect will be one of um, a flock and um, those bits of shapes that work. There we go. So I'm just looking, trying to focus not on the volumes of the birds, trying to just focus on the shapes that the black makes trying to empty my mind. Oh, thank you. Did you hear me say thank you? Wonderful. Great service around here. Thank you, Bob. Um, okay, now let's see where I've got to. Oh, yes, I'm on that one. So I'll just pick that up here. I love flamingos. So when we were in Dubai, there was a flamingo sanctuary uh, quite near Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, and there was a hide there, so you could go in the hide and um, take photos and watch them. And um, sometimes they would uh, be feeding and stuff, and they, there were absolutely loads of them. And I really liked that. Uh, I mean, that's probably not very good for the flamingos, but I liked the juxtaposition. Dubai of the um, uh, buildings, the sort of human um, industry and nature and the way they did sort of coexist. So you had these kind of urban camels that um, really lived by the side of the roadside <laughs> and um, a, right, I've actually by luck rather than design, more or less managed to trace right exactly right to the end. Don't know what I'm going to do next though, I literally don't know how this is going to work. We'll maybe go to another part of the drawing and try something else while I work it out. Okay, so we've got some um, holes that need to go in here in order for these to make any sense at all. Um, they, they've got their hole. We've got a few bits of bodies. Um, I'm just going to put some random shapes. I'm not really worrying about the position of them. Um, we need some holes here, I think. Uh, this is a body. We've got so I'm going to put a little I feel like we've got some shapes like this going on though I'm not quite sure where the birds are now that's oh, so there's a there's a body here so I'm going to put a little bit of that just to help it with its um, kind of looking a bit like something cheating a little bit I suppose. Right and oh we've got this one here so I can see this has got their lovely graceful neck and that will help. Put that in there. Okay. There we go. Right. And we've got some legs as well. So the legs are really nice. They've got those wonderful bobbly knees. I'm just going to randomly. So this is what I was talking about kind of putting in features without actually wondering about if they're in the right place and there's a bit of that reflection as well. So I'm just looking for shapes. There's a bit of a bent leg around there somewhere. Um, so it does start to look quite graphic. Um, now let's also then, let's start at the bottom. So look at that lovely pattern at the bottom. Quick cup of tea. Cheers. So down here, I've got some really nice um, textures. So I've got the, 
I've got the reflections which have got some very fine divisions and fine lines so I'm thinking they can go you know we can use that real um, like the, like we were doing in the warm-up you know that sort of sense of really um, moving from the elbow I'm gonna go in here like that and I'm gonna try if I can to possibly link them up with those bits so I've got that sense of you know I don't know if that's gonna work and I'm just looking at how how the shapes divide so we've got these little edges here as the reflections of the flamingos form patterns in the water there like that great way to use up your pen Could perhaps have done this with a dipping pen that might be nice Uh, also, another option is to use some colour. I could put some red legs in. Might do that later um, because this is looking quite monochrome. So we're up here, right? And I'm liking again. I want to try and have a sense. I'm going to put a few legs in here. So I think we have some nice. Let's get some legs for. And then it gives us something to aim for with the um, shadows. There, okay. And then, the, sorry, the reflections can go between the legs, like they do in the picture. And some of them actually go right behind the birds like that. So what I'm really doing, you could say this is an impression. It's trying to create an impression of those flamingos without um, really being too faithful. So I'm literally just going to put some legs in here and some random bits of body shapes. And I don't know, this might just be a total disaster, but I think they have the capacity to look flamingo-esque without being literal. Okay, and that's now I'm going to do some of those shadows in between. Those reflections, I should say. Let's do that. Okay. So um, there's a bit of the, so that's like the middle ground. And I do feel like I would quite like to put some red legs on these flamingos. And they've got quite red beaks as well. So I'm gonna be bold and use the um, thick end of the red pen just to do those beaks. A bit like I did the um, hat of this dancer. So just picking out, like I picked out his hat, I'm just going to pick out anything that looks vaguely beaky with the red. Um, there's a bit of a beaky thing. Okay. Oh, and there'll be a bit of a beak there too. Right. And um, let's get those legs in as well. So let's do those legs red. That's a good. This isn't exactly continuous line, is it? Sorry, I've gone off piste. Um, yeah, we've got quite a lot of these legs happening here. More than I've got in my drawing. Might get some more there. And we've got lots of legs. Kind of, they're kind of gangly. And they go like that, don't they? Um, there's a leg. I give them their joints too. So again, I was talking before about observing 
what happens and not necessarily putting it in the right place but um, right and then these ones they actually their legs are going right down into the they're in front of the water with the shadows with the reflections I should say and there's some areas where there are actually quite a lot of legs in the gaps so I'm going to put some of those in some gaps like that just to give that sense of right and then let's get back to the black pen and do those um, stones at the bottom so these I could do these as a continuous meandering right I'm not even going to look at my page I'm just going to look at the picture and pick out some of those borders edges bits that I see connected so I'm like tracing the channels I'm jumping in my head from one area to another but not moving my pen and just that sense of the there and how that joins up then with the shadows okay and I might just take this up a little bit through some of those darker areas where there's a definite space between the flamingos and let that carry on up but still just keeping that sense of rhythm because that's a thing you know the water's got wind blowing on it gradually and um, there we go right so that's no great masterpiece is it but it gives you a sense of some of the fun you can have. I could actually colour this black in. I might do that. That would be a final thing. So let's take that up. Let's go for... Oh, I know. Rather than colouring it in, I'm just going to do... I'm just going to do a definition along the very top and let the viewer's eye fill in the colouring in. And it will allow me to slightly refine some of these um, silhouettes. I've got the pen on its side so it's coming out really thick. It's a lovely Stedler brush pen. And these are the ones I use for my shout outs as well. remember to look. <laughs> okay. And after this I'm going to do, I could do the cheese plant. You can choose um, in the chat if you want. I can do the cheese plant from the photos or I can do the, um, that one didn't really work did it? Let's see if I can make it a bit more elegant. Um, the cheese plant or the um, other thing what did I have oh it was like a weeping fig I'll show you them in a second and we can decide which one to do so this is really quite abstract um, let's move the camera up a bit so you can see the whole thing whoa there you go um, flamingos more fun than glory right so let's have a look now I'll show you the um, I'll show you the options so we've got there's the palm tree so we've got this one this is just leaves or this one which is a cheese plant so you could do that one or that one what do you reckon I'm gonna have a cup of tea for a second and see what you think and if you're not sure I'll just go with the I'll go with my choice there we go that was the 
There's that one if you want. Okay, well actually we've probably got time to do both. So right, I'm gonna do one more sheet of just loosening up. So I got a bit tight with those flamingos. Um, let's use a different color as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go in purple. So I'm going to have that, um, I'm having that leaf next to me just as a sort of inspiration, but I'm not really doing the leaf. See, I'm just vaguely following it, and I'm going to put some holes in too. So the holes like that, and then when we do the leaf properly, it'll be more, it'll be more accurate. Okay, right. Let's use a blue. Here we are. Okay. Um. So I'm going to try and do a little bit of something where I can just set off, set off around the shape and just practice loose arm from the shoulder. And um, the nice thing about this is you can really, really switch your mind off because you've got a plan then, you've got a structure and a plan. It doesn't need to look like anything, but you can just, um, it's very good. I think it's called a displacement activity. So sometimes if you've got a problem that you're trying to solve, you can do something like this and just hold it in your mind and find yourself a sort of mindless bit of drawing to do. And I might do a structured one in a minute. So I think before I go on to do the plant, there we are, there's a bit in there. Let's do, um, I'm trying to, again, it's quite nice to keep things on the same sort of spectrum. So I'm gonna do, I've got a nice dark blue. And let's do, um, I'm just going to I'm just going to fill the page so I'm going to allow myself basically it's a bit like doing hatching I'm going to zoom down those and then I'm going to zoom up like that zoom down the gap and it's quite good actually for practicing your control for hatching trying to keep the same distance away as the shape changes so you can try and actually speed up like that and try and make sure that these edges here keep track of the edge of the shape. Even when you're going quite fast, Let's speed up a bit. Because when you're drawing figures or portraits or faces, that uh, that tracking is really handy. Oh, hi, Brian. It's really nice to see you. Oh, Twitch is slow, is it? Oh, right. OK. Oh, thanks so much for joining. How are you doing? I really enjoyed looking at your still life, by the way. That's incredible. You really are. I could tell then why you were talking about warms and uh, the um, what were you we talking about? The cool um, where the shadow meets the light. Those cool half tones. I can see now that I've seen your work that uh, that's your that's your practice coming on. Um, Brian, I've got my friend Paul watching as well. You might like to say hello to each other. Paul is um, a, an artist who's doing. Um, he does some beautiful work but he's just starting with lino cut so we've been talking about that as well that's why we were talking about that earlier right so I've done a little bit of loosening up um, and if you want any shout outs just say we've done actually do you know what Brian I'm going to show you did you see Phoenix's shout out at the beginning 
You can have one of these if you want. I'm so pleased to see you. Um, yeah, and I didn't see any comments from you on Twitch either. So, um, yeah, I don't know what's happening. It's probably my end. So this was a little, um, a little sentence or two about um, Phoenix. So I can do one of those for you if you like. Oh no, it's really, it means a lot to me that you came back and found my stream. Um, okay, so we are going to do the cheese plant now. Um, so I think I will stick with my black because this is really about the lines rather than about the um, uh, colour. So I was saying earlier that I tend to start with a, um, a light line and then I can use the darker line to um, commit a bit more. So just like when you're doing um, a sketch or something, you go lighter and then commit um, as you know you, you form your shapes. So this is going to be a little bit slower. Oh yes you are, you are an artist Paul, there just is a point when you just have to decide. Um, right, okay so let's go. So still squinting, I'm going to turn this this way up again like that so it matches the picture. Right. So I'm looking at that, I hope you can see, I'm just doing those initial shapes of that first leaf. I might just put something else, okay now this is just uh, unashamed self-promotion. I'm going to put one of those other ones here so that if someone's joining the stream they can see where, what we've been doing. There, okay, right. leaf here we go so looking at those edges I love cheese plants I haven't managed to grow one do you grow indoor plants as well Paul I know you're very good with your garden I don't know what you're like with um, uh, house plants I did a load of repotting the other day okay. who was it who would sing Oh, it's that awful Rolf Harris, isn't it? Much disgraced, but he did used to sing when he was. Um, very gifted artist, Rolf Harris. So there was a, there is a very interesting um, uh, documentary of him painting the Queen's portrait long before his fall from grace. I think there's, you know, these artists. Like Lucy and Freud as well. There can be a lot levelled against them in terms of their personal life, um, but you can still, I think, learn things from their um, their art. I um, I often come back to Freud thinking about this because you know, rumour has it he didn't treat his. Uh, didn't treat his um, models at all well, but I do like the fact that he wasn't um, uh, very discriminatory in his choice of models, in that he did models male and female, all different sizes. Um, I think he, I probably identify with the fact that he really just liked kind of flesh you know whatever it was whatever um, shape it was just interesting you've got a week oh a weeping fig oh moth or oh gosh oh my goodness right you're totally um, you're totally awesome then in the if you can get orchids to flower um, do you put them in do they are they in glass pots your orchids, Paul. Right, this 
one is in front here and then I've got some I'm gonna put these in again I'm cheating because it's not continuous line but I just want to make sure those those holes make the cut and here I love the way these shapes are, are echo each other across the leaf it's really nice detail and uh, we've got some here as well that leaf has got loads I've got these uh, I know people sometimes post on Instagram when they have a new leaf on their um, <laughs> on their cheese plant they get very excited watching it unfold which I think is very nice okay right so we've got some holes in there and then we've got one in the foreground here so this is the I'm going to go for that pale yellow one now sort of yellowy green color and it's got a stem coming down like that I'm going to simplify these shapes a tiny bit there's this stem it joins up here so it's a bit like the palm trees trying to work out what's in front of what but I do quite like those shapes because there is a giant one isn't there in the foreground there that's actually getting blurred no more than once oh right okay are they pink I think you did an orchid did you do a picture of an orchid Paul I think I might have seen one on your feed Now I might even be very tinker and make make up some of this one. I think I'm going to make up the boundaries of this like this because I want to have a sense of a complete leaf coming forward. I think that would be vaguely credible. What do you think? And then I like that arch there. If you can see where I'm getting that from, just at the bottom of that foreground leaf, like that. Okay, so um, and now I can do this one here because I've got a sense of where we're going with the shapes. There's its stalk, like that, and right, we've got a mixing up. Okay, so it's the um, the edge. I really notice how you this edge has to kind of work as a connected thing, um, like that. And it comes in round here, there. It's very like the palm trees, really, the way they form. Okay, and let's put some of those holes in as well. I'm trying, I should really observe the shape of the holes a bit better, not just make them up as rectangles. Okay. Oh, the moth. Oh, right. Oh, you've got a a cabinet. Oh. Is that a glass cabinet? Sounds like a um, big project, Paul. I know you're no <laughs> I don't know how you fit it all in. You're no you're no stranger to big projects, are you? Um right, let's catch that. There now Brian's gone away. Brian's absolutely lovely. I expect Brian will be back soon. And I suspect Brian is uh, um, is not um, I don't, I think there might be um, more to Brian than meets the eye. Brian is on Instagram and um, you'll see I follow them. Um, very good artist um, and uh, doing still life and I think oils, oils still life. Um, so I was very flattered when they popped up on my stream and popped back again. Um, okay. Right, 
and this one okay let's go down now this one's got some lovely shaped holes look at those beautiful well, that's a I'm not I'm going to edit out that foreground leaf and just imagine what's going on in this background leaf here because I love its holes let's go there Right, now let's get some of those beautiful, look at there's a rhythm again of holes coming in there like that. Not exactly like that, but kind of like that. And then here, this leaf is almost more whole than leaf. There we are. And, and this one. I'm using a bit of creative license here. And then I can see there's a rhythm as well of holes coming this way. So there's its stalk there. I'm not going to cut that off. Um, but we've got some lovely holes here, like that, and up here as well. OK, right. Um, so I'm going to just put those stems going down like that behind let's bring this one this way like palm trees number five and six overlapping I'm going to bring this one here because that really helps um, as well if you put something behind like that it helps to make sense of what's um, what's in front and what's in the back okay so now I'm going to use a darker pen and um, just go over, let's pick, so this foreground one I really like. Um, some orchids, oh right, yes, misting. Um, oh really, wow. They live outside, gosh, even in this climate. Um, Right. Maybe I could draw some orchids. Maybe I could funk, um, put some orchids in one of my streams. Hey, next week, it's, um, I don't know if you saw and if you're free, but next week we're going to be doing um, uh, cubism. So there's a fun thing. I'm really looking forward to that have to decide what sort of subject again Picasso um, do you know what between us you me and the gatepost I'm not actually a big Picasso fan but I did love his um, I love his line drawings he had a real incredible control of the pen as did Matisse um, there's some nice footage of Matisse holding a flower um, he had like a clipboard and a flower and was literally drawing the flower on the clipboard. Um, it was really beautiful in the Matisse Museum in Nice in the south of France, where I was lucky enough to go a couple of years ago. Okay, so there's that one, and um, let's bring this top one out as well. Um, and I think I might do that thing as well that we did before with the palm trees, just bring those that left hand side of the um, stalks because I think that really helps create a sense of direction and volume right now this so this green one in the foreground even though it's very light I think I might actually do that one as well so I'm gonna go and go for it with that one I'm not pressing so hard because it's quite detailed but, um, and it's quite small, I don't want to overwhelm it with a thick brush line. Um, there we go. Is the music okay, by the way? Is it nice? Oh, or are you still listening to Depeche Mode? <laughs> oh, okay, fantastic, you're going to the gallery. 
Oh, Paul, I was hoping you might go to the gallery on the 22nd, but if you if you're going, um, then you definitely you can get in. Um, but I was hoping to be there when you went, but it doesn't matter. You'll see Luna is up, that painting that you like, up on the wall. Right. Yes, um, and Caroline's work's amazing as well. I'm really, really, really happy. It was uh, me, I asked her actually if we could exhibit together. I like the contrast. Okay, there we go. Might turn that the other way up so that you can see. There. And um, another nice thing about doing this in the dark, thicker line is that there's less decision making the next time round. So again, you can switch off a little bit more um, so it's nice from that point of view. There we go. Oh, okay. That would be good. You might, uh, you might get um, a sort of a mention in my talk. I'm doing a talk about. Um, body image through the eyes of an artist and I was going to do some anecdotal things that we can discuss your anonymity or otherwise. I'm hoping that Cheryl, the model um, for my last big oil painting, um, so not the, um, the one of the couple but the one of um, Cheryl reclining, I'm hoping that she will be there as well. It would be really nice if she was there. She's been very inspirational. Okay, so um, I'm wondering whether to just put a few tracks of veins going through here. I think I will, because they are a nice um, structural thing which helps show the... the way the leaves grow and they track along like that. Again, it's kind of meditative. Leaves are great for this. I'm not even really looking at the plant, just occasionally glancing up to see what direction they tend to lean in, how they anchor. That. Um, this one, oh, this one has as well, it's got a bit, it's got a nice, actually this has got a really nice thing going down like that and then again it's got, they're coming out like that. Gives a sense of the way the leaf, hopefully the leaf is kind of folded and turning. And then this splendid one has got definitely needs its veins in and um, when you're doing leaf veins it's really well worth remembering that um, when you look at the leaf um, unless you're looking down on the leaf the veins are almost never um, equidistant from one side to the other and that's a really good um, thing to check that you're remembering um, I'm looking down like that, that one will be. And then let's just see, I think cheese plants, they alternate. So looking at where they anchor, I don't think they're opposite each other. Might be wrong. But once you put those veins in, you can kind of show the, you can, you can suggest curl with the veins. And look at that, I've got a bit of a bump. So a bit like when you're doing a shadow on um, on a surface. There we are. So there's our cheese plant. Oh, Cheryl is a bit of a star. Oh, we're at Paul. Mm -hmm. Me too, Paul. I think you really started me off. I think uh, 
Meeting you and your enthusiasm gave me so much confidence and the fact that it was so, um, you know, you reflected back how good it was from your point of view um, made me much more comfortable about, um, you know, perhaps sometimes when I'm drawing people who are going through or have been through some, some sort of trauma, uh, whether it's like bullying or um, cancer, uh, you know, surgery and all those sort of things. I think it's a big responsibility how you um, how you deal with someone because they are essentially, quite, you know, all humans are fragile, aren't they? So I think as an artist, if you're trusted with portraying them, um, on the one hand, you know, I, I'm generally very honest with what I what I draw, but at the same time, I think. What you showed me was how, how, how good it can be and how if you honestly reflect someone, you can, um, uh, you can show them, you can hold the mirror up to them and show them how, how good they are. So, um, yeah, you really, you, it's really great. I keep, and you've probably seen on my website, your testimonial is the top of my nudes page. Um, right, okay. I wonder if Brian's coming back, I hope so. Brian, we miss you. Okay, so there's a cheese plant. We've got some dancers. And I'm wondering what I can do now. There's Phoenix. Oh, I might just do Phoenix. I, I don't know if Phoenix is still watching. I think that's a. I could do Phoenix a calligraphy shout out if he wants. Um, yeah, there are the slightly less less successful flamingos but there's elements about them that works right I've actually got to the bottom of my pile I might just have to reach for some more paper sign of a good session right what should I do then um, hmm I know all right here's a here's a thing I'm going to move on to the this one like that um, and I'm going to do a self-portrait. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Oh yes, Brian, yes. Um, ah, sorry, yes, that was a bit confusing, wasn't it? Um, so uh, the post on Instagram was that I was not going to be screen streaming on Instagram or Facebook, because as you know, I usually stream on Facebook as well. But I just felt like I really, um, I felt it was such a, a good and a strong thing for the football and sports industry to do that um, I really wanted to um, show some solidarity. So I thought it wouldn't help hurt me. I'm, I'm sure I'm just a little drop in the ocean, but um, yeah. Yeah, I just find it it's so awful and I think criticism can... Uh, you know, toxic, racist criticism or all sorts of criticism can paralyse people from expressing themselves. So um, that's where I was coming from with that. Right, so I'm doing a little bit of a... I'm going to do a bit of a self-portrait for this last one. So, um, here we go. Right, this is going to be interesting. Alright, so I'm going to get the, I'm holding the pen at a bit of a distance so I can see what I'm doing. I've got, I can see the curve of my head like that. I might do some of the, that hair might work well with continuous line. And I'm having to kind of keep my head still. I'm almost looking at my drawing on the screen rather than uh... oh yeah thank you Paul every voice should count shouldn't it um, you say the nicest things right here we go so I'm just looking at the hair as a block Okay, this is the tricky bit. Down, dun, dun. I'm going to do the 
profile, eyelash, nose, trying to be ruthlessly honest here, I might as well go round that nose. going to be pretty. But I'm not in the business of flattery. Okay, there's the bottom lip and the muscles under the bottom lip. Right, I'm going to just have a sense of this. My muzzle comes like that. And then we have a nice double chin. And there we go. This is not pretty. Right, okay, and then it goes in here. Da, da, da. Now, I brow up here. Connects up with the nose, I think. And another one here there okay um you know how sometimes they say don't try this at home try this at home <laughs> try this on yourself and there's that eyeball bit of a bag okay now i've got a so because I'm using the camera, I'm not actually needing to look at my... It's quite surreal. I don't need to look at my... Um, I'm going to shut my mouth. I don't need to look at my page because I'm looking at the... Um, the camera. Okay. Now being a bit kind with some jowling jowls going on there okay <laughs> you don't look at mirrors oh Paul not even with your glasses off <laughs> and this look at this this is hideous but let's get some Or draw one of those handsome children of yours. That's another option, isn't it? So I'm using density of line to create colour or, or shade. So in those bits in the hair, by going over them, I'm creating a bit of shade. And we've got I so wasn't going to do this. <laughs> you can see for this where control of your line, it really does pay off. There. Okay. And um, I'm going to go a little bit more here. So I'm trying to create now, we're going back into other subjects, but I'm going to try and create a little sense of form. Yeah, I suppose gone are the days when yours fell asleep or maybe do they ever fall asleep on the couch? That's a good time to pounce if your children fall asleep. You can pounce, they fall asleep with the light on, pounce with your sketch pad catch them while they're unawares. Right. Now there's there's the edge there. And with my collar coming in there. I bought this shirt the other day on Instagram. It was a real late night purchase. <laughs> um, it was a, a billy bargain and um, probably not 
You're out on the road with your family. Oh, Brian. Well, thank you so much for joining. Of course, you can just watch this on Catch Up afterwards. You can watch it on YouTube after. But it's so nice to have you. Hello to your family. I wonder where you are on the road, where you're going. Okay. So this is possibly a slightly ill-advised bit of self-portrait just to show how ruthless you can be with your own image. And I might just do, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in with this dark now and do a little bit of rationalisation. Let's get some of those folds. I quite like the hair. Not so keen on this profile. I might um, also rationalise this profile. Right, I'm going to go, let's see. It's this lip which is really unflattering. There. Let's go there. Okay, that looks a little bit more like is it? The honest truth, the ravages of age. Okay. You've, <laughs> you've filled his bed with blue and silver glitter. That's not nice. Um, and um, can I ask Paul who is the child in this relationship? <laughs> right, and I'm going to have a little bit of a, a little bit of surgery on my neck there. Just get that there, so that doesn't look quite so. Ruthless. Okay, there we are. So there's a line drawing. Um, have we got five more minutes? Okay. What should I do for five minutes then? done your shout out before Brian haven't I? Um, should we do some more dances? Okay I quite like doing that dancer that hip-hop dancer. Um, oh I know have you seen um, Rodin's lovely um, let's do that so I do it and I might use pencil um, Bit. So have you seen Rodin's lovely, I think they're Balinese dancers and um, they have, um, so they have, um, so he was, they're very gestural and they have lovely baggy trousers on I think. Let's do some, might get the blue the folds of the trousers. Um, let's do a bit darker. And some shoes as well. The shoes really help to show the position of the dance, I think. Face. Let's put something on. Um, trying to be very gestural. Oh yes, you definitely should, Brian. It's so great for loosening up. It's a good warm-up as well. Um, really, yep. Some sort of a dance thing. Um, let's have. Um, so I'm thinking someone with their arms kind of thrown forward. Um, and there we go, like that. Has that maybe 
more. I'm, as I was talking to Paul before about really having a sense of the spine, you know, there's the rib cage, there's the pelvis. Even if you're being very, very gestural with your drawings. I've just invented some sort of a blue costume here, yeah, blue and purple. No idea why. Just these pens show up nicely, I think. And um, where's that purple? Here we are. Okay, so let's have a. There. Not really liking this for black here. There. Black, maybe black hair. Let's do some hair. Beautiful black flowing hair. Get those, there's the face and the sense of the arm and the hands, some sort of gesture, and these feet. Um, so this foot will be here, like that. And then this one, like that. Okay. Um, yes, okay, so I think we're just about at the end. We're just about at the stage where I really need to say hello, goodbye. Um, okay, I, I want to just take you to the drawing board and go and rattle through what we did. Um, I haven't got them in order, but uh, Brian, right, when you're doing your drawing exercises and Paul and anyone else, these big shapes with a thicker pen, just giving yourself a bit of a framework. Um, you can try this sort of thing. This is sort of Picasso style. Um, taking, you can look at videos, you can find some videos of birds flying. It's really nice to freeze frame the videos. Um, I don't know if you watched the chicken one, Brian, but if you look on my YouTube channel, a couple of lives ago I did some chickens and freeze framed the videos. Um, so that's that. What else have we got? Um, oh, that's just monochrome. This was just like taking the pen for a walk. Um, then we did some palm trees. So that was from the reference photo. I'll show you here, that reference photo. Um, and looked at doing them all in a light line and then going over in a darker line. Um, so that was the palm trees. We did some dancers. So these were from imagination. I'm not so keen on doing dancers from imagination. Maybe I just need a bit of practice, but um, uh, it's lovely if you go to the um, Royal Opera House um, YouTube channel, they've got lots of ballet footage and you can freeze frame that and draw ballerinas from it. Sheets and sheets of ballerinas, great for your gesture. Um, that was just meant to be male dancers, they're doing all their leaping. Um, and then that was probably my favourite from today I think. This is. Uh, just like a sort of slightly more um, weighty but hip hoppy sort of feel about it. I think I can maybe go in a bit closer, you can see the, there. see the sort of energy. And just by picking out uh, a couple of features, uh, particularly things like hats, heads, feet, hands, you can. Um, make dynamics to your pictures like that they're quite they're almost cartoony then we did um, this is a cheese plant from another one of the references and if you want to try these reference photos are all on on they're there so you can download them from my website and do it yourself so there was cheese plant and then we did a, a shout out for Phoenix just showing how you can do continuous line with writing and you can uh, so doing that and then rotating so rotating the page 
pressing down with your pen as it rests. And there we go. Um, oh, we did some flamingos. Da -da. That wasn't so successful. Um, and that atrocious drawing. Sadly, fairly accurate there. OK, so um, Brian, Paul and anyone else who's watching, thank you so much. Um, enjoy your trip with your family, Brian. And um, it's just so lovely to see you. So thanks so much, Paul, for joining. I hope this has inspired you to um, get your pens out and just uh, let go of that uh, final, um, the perfection of the final thing and just enjoy making the lines and see how that affects your, your other work. OK. Oh yes, do please send them on Instagram. Yes, Brian, that would be really nice. I'd love to see what you do. Okay, Paul, I'll say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me. See you at Heart of the Tribe, if not before. Okay, take care, everybody. And bye, Phoenix, if you're still watching.